Good morning. We are starting off our week-long vacation in New England here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And the plan for today is to have a little look around MIT and Harvard and eat some yummy food. First yummy food of the day, breakfast at a bakery. I'm here at the highly recommended Tate Bakery looking for something delicious to eat for breakfast. Wow, look at these pear tarts. They're just beautiful. Everything here is really pretty. Oh, whoa. Ooh, a chocolate snail. That's no escargot. These danishes. Oh, wow, look at these hand cinnamon -y things. Sour. Cherries on scone. That's a pretty different. Ooh, that ham and cheese croissant looks delicious. These are nice American biscuits, buttermilk biscuits. Here's Ian's delicious apricot and almond Danish. And my chocolate rose, which is supposed to be like a cinnamon roll except chocolatey. This is a famous Boston brand, Dunkin' Donuts, and you drink coffee, it's allegedly really good coffee. You want to know how to spot a serious Dunkin' Donuts fan? Look for the Dunky Junkie bumper sticker on their car. So here's a restaurant that I would love to eat at, but we won't have time because there's like dozens of restaurants we need to eat in the two days we're in Cambridge. But it looks delicious because I love gyoza. These like Japanese pot sticker dumplings. So look at how cute this place is. See their logo? It's called Dumpling Daughter. Isn't that a great name? And look at this logo. The two D's, it's totally like Dunkin' Donuts, probably the most well-known brand name in Boston. This is a pretty little collection of magenta flowers and vegetables. Apple cider donut cake and truffles. That looks fascinating. I'm not falling for that weird stuff, but I am going to have an apple cider donut before the week is out. It's a priority. Also something maple. I began my tour of MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, by visiting the bookstore since it was near our hotel. MIT is known for being a haven for math and science nerds. And I gotta say the bookstore does not dispel this reputation. It's an old physics joke, but a good one. Never trust an atom, they make up everything. And in case you didn't know, this is an example of the Boston accent. Wicked smart. MIT was founded in 1861, but because of the American Civil War, the first students did not begin attending classes here until 1865. This is one of the main buildings where the MIT Visitors Center is. It's 77 Mass Ave. The building on Mass Ave is so massive that we had trouble getting photos with it, but we tried. We were excited to finally visit the MIT campus since our son Trent's significant otter, Natalie, is a PhD student there. We also had to take a selfie in front of this building because it has such an iconic connection with the MIT campus. This here is the Great Dome, also known as the Barker Engineering Library. And this famous dome is modeled after Rome's Parthenon. This building is one of the original buildings from the MIT campus. It's been here since 1916. From here in Killian Court, you have the Great Dome on one end, and then as you turn around in this direction, you can see the Charles River, which separates Cambridge from Boston and Boston skyline. And 
today at the foot of the Boston skyline is the median, which I think Brits call a central reservation, full of Canada geese today. This beautiful and interesting sculpture is called Alchemist, and it was created by Yaume Plenza to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the founding of MIT. This really interesting structure was also built in 1955, and it is the MIT Chapel. But look at it, it's got kind of a castle vibe going on with these arches and then a moat around it. designed by the famous architect I.M.K., who is an alum of MIT, graduated in 1940. What's funny is that Ian really likes I.M.K. He's a big architecture fan, but Ian really hates this kind of brutalist cement structure architecture. And of course, it's also ruined by all of this crane and building equipment. So, oh well, at least we saw the green building in all its glory. This cool sculpture is called Le Grand Voile. I think that's how it's pronounced. Let's just call it the big sail because I'm better at pronouncing English. It is a sculpture by Alexander Calder. It was actually fabricated in France. This fascinating looking building, the Stata Center, was designed by architect Frank Gehry, and it's home to the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Frank Gehry described this building as looking like a bunch of drunken robots got together to party and celebrate. Bill Gates has a lot of computer science buildings in various campuses that I have seen. I'm in the middle of the city, and there are turkeys that have blocked my way as I was going across with the bike. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Did not expect to see turkeys in the middle of Cambridge. They just kind of have the rule of the place, I guess. After all the walking and biking, we needed lunch and I needed lobster one of my biggest food priorities of the week. Boston is known for several types of food. Boston cream pie, Boston baked beans, maybe even a tea party. But what I am here to eat in Boston and New England is seafood and specifically lobster rolls. And right now we're at this place in Cambridge which is known for the famous lobster sandwich. Alive and kicking lobster, so we're gonna try it out. That's the tank where the lobsters are. Alive and kicking. Look at that beautiful lobster. This is not your traditional lobster roll, it's actually a lobster sandwich. So they have this white bread toasted with just tons of lobster packed inside. Can't wait to try it. Well, it's delicious. Lots of fresh lobster and not a lot of mayonnaise. Not a lot of fuss here at Alive and Kickin'. Just some really good fresh lobster. 
after the lobster sandwich, Ian needed to tick a box on his food priority list, gelato. Here's Ian at his favorite gelato place, Amarino, Milan, Paris, London. We've been to the London one. We haven't been to all these others, but we have been to the one in Plano, Texas. And now, Cambridge, Massachusetts. I just got a kid-sized cup with raspberry and blueberry cheesecake. Here is Ian Gelato Masterpiece ice cream cone. Wow, how many flavors are in that, Ian? Three. Oh, he's happy. You can yeah, see. I'm happy. And now for a campus visit of Harvard on the other side of Cambridge. Now we're going to take a wee look around Harvard University. Near this spot, as indicated in the street pavement, stood when the college was founded two houses to the east. The house occupied by Nathaniel Eaton, first teacher of the college, while the college hall was building to the west, the house of Edward Cock, acquired by the college before 1654, used as a dormitory, and now known as Cox College. These cobblestones make a racket every time someone drives over them. So odd. Here we are in Harvard Yard. Or Harvard Yard. Here is University Hall and the statue of John Harvard, the founder of Harvard University. And here is Memorial Church, just off Harvard Yard. The Memorial Church bell honors those who died in World War I. That's why the inscription, in memory of voices that are hushed. It's a 5,000 pound bell that was cast in a foundry in Loughborough, England, and it was donated to Harvard in 1932. This is Memorial Hall. The tower has amazing detail. Sadly, we weren't allowed inside this gorgeous building, which was a pity because I really wanted to see those stained glass windows from the inside. But here are a few views of what we saw from the outside to wrap up our Harvard campus visit. Before we head to Rockport, Massachusetts, I have one last highlight to share of our stay in Cambridge. I finally got to meet my grand cats. First, there was Clyde a loving cat who was pretty friendly to everybody. So he was extremely cooperative and posed for this photo. Then Cleo, as in Cleopatra, came to assess the stranger in her midst. She was a bit more timid and wary. Eventually, she let me pet her for a second, which then I think made Clyde a little jealous. So then he had to join that party and get the attention. But I did get Cleo for a moment alone later and she let me scratch her ears a bit. To conclude this cat chapter, I'll share this photo of big cuddly Clyde. And this, my all time favorite picture of Cleo from when she was a wee kitten. Rockport was another place we visited while in Massachusetts. Rockport is east of Boston, about an hour by car or hour and 20 minutes by train. It is a seaside town on the tip of the Cape Ann Peninsula. Rockport has a bit of a Cornish feel to it and has a very different vibe than Boston. So I'm glad that we included this excursion as part of our New England trip. To get to the end of the peninsula, you can walk down the road with the unique name of Bearskin Neck. It is a fun street full of colorful shops, colorful flowers, and colorful people. A really fuzzy bumblebee on a magenta flower.
it's fun to walk to the end of the peninsula and look at this rocky hook sticking out into the ocean. You feel like you're standing on the tip of New England, walking back in time and remembering the people who have come to these shores for centuries and the people who continue to fish from these shores today. Another key highlight to a visit to Rockport is eating seafood. And of course, I wanted more lobster before heading back to Texas. So after the lobster sandwich in Cambridge, it was time for a legit waterfront lobster roll. We visited the Roy Moore Lobster Company. Here is a view of their takeaway shop, but we ate at the restaurant down the street. We lucked out and got a table by the window and enjoyed a view of the harbor and a big fat lobster roll crammed with fresh lobster and butter and claws. And now for our moment of zen, here is a few seconds of the sights and sounds of the waves lapping against the shore in the Cape Ann Harbor. Don't miss next Friday's video where I will share our adventures in the fabulous city of Boston. I hope you enjoyed this recap of our visits to Cambridge and Rockport, Massachusetts. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.